In a recent video, we looked at five creative ways that you can add imagery to your Webflow website. And in this video, we're gonna do it again. But rather than show you the exact same five I've already showed you, I'm gonna show you five more ways that you can add imagery to your website using just Figma and Webflow. So here's what's on the agenda. We're gonna look at cutout images, funky shapes, faded images, context imagery, and background images. And with all of those awful names aside, let's jump right in. Number one, cut out images. Photo tools have come a long way since we had to cut out images in Photoshop. And nowadays there are plenty of online tools that you can use to remove a background by simply uploading the image and waiting a couple of seconds. Though a lot of them will get you to pay for credits, there are a couple of great ones that are fully free. I like using one called Foco Clipping. Weird name, but great tool. So let's upload our image. We'll wait for that. We'll download it again. Just hit X, download, and already we're done. So from here, we can add it directly into our Webflow website and play around with it. Or we can first take it into Figma and add some background shapes and elements into it first before we upload it to our website. So let's do that. So I've already had a screenshot of my website into Figma so that I can visualize how I actually want the image to go there. And I can drag my image in. And what I'll quickly do is I'll just move it into place a little bit. And I'm just going to set the boundaries to the actual uh, edge of the person. So I'm going to hit the corner. I'm going to hit command on my keyboard and I'm just going to go to the edge of the actual person itself. Hold down shift, get that back into place. Maybe about there and then hit command again uh, just to get that top boundary. And so from here, if I wanted, I could uh, make the image actually uh, sit along the bottom of the section like this, and now I could add some background imagery. I could add a square or a circle. Move that behind him and change the color of that one. And already that's not too bad, but I can also make the edge of the person, the boundary actually connect with the bottom of the shape. So I'm gonna go back into my shape. I'll open this up and I'll change the bottom to be zero. And now I can move this guy into place. I'm hitting down shift and now he actually cuts with the shape itself. And now I can play around with this a bit. Maybe make that smaller, I'll add in another shape. Make that a bit smaller. Maybe change the color of that. And I can take my time and fully play around with this to get it exactly how I want it to look. But once I'm done, I'm gonna select all these images that I want and I'm gonna group them. I'm gonna scroll down, I'll export them. As a PNG is fine. Just call that hero image. And now we're gonna go into Webflow. So I'm gonna drop in our image that we just made. I'll make the image HIDPI. And now we have our hero section fully finished. And usually I wouldn't use an image of someone so stern, but for now that's pretty good. Number two is funky shapes. Figma loves funky shapes and so does Gumroad. And the reason they do is because it makes the image more interesting just by making the image not in a square. So let's go back into Figma. First, we'll make some funky shapes and then we'll put the images into the shapes. And we can fully play around. So let's try with a star first. So we'll drop in our star. Let's make that four maybe. And we'll take the inside sections and we'll increase the radius. Let's just do really big. There we go, that's a shape. And that's already one shape. Let's do another one. Grab an oval. Duplicate that out. So I alt dragged and then I'll hit command D to duplicate it again. And then let's just make that a bit more square. And that's another shape and we can keep going with this. Let's make a rectangle. We're going to double click and we're going to add some points to the center of it. And we're going to make sure we have this point selected and we're going to drag that in a bit. We'll do the same to the other side and hit shift to make sure it's equal. And I can alt drag that out. And on this one, I'm going to select these two points and up the radius. Let's make that a bit more, even more. And then on this one, I'm going to select the opposite points. Let's do the top two. I'm going to hold shift and also select the bottom two and let's up the radius again. Maybe not as much, maybe about that. And so now we have four different unique image boxes. Now we can finally add in our image. So I'm just going to select an image. I'm going to change the fill. Instead of solid, it's going to be an image. And then I'm simply going to drag the image into the section. Now it's actually cut off a little bit. It's not perfectly in the center. I'm going to change fill to crop 
and then I'm just going to drag that across. I'm using shift to make sure it stays in place. And now that's much better. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this shape. I'm going to copy the fill that's an image with command C. I'm going to go into my other shape and I'm going to hit command option V. Now, let me go back. If I hit command V, I'm going to paste the image in place, but it's going to be on top of the fill. And we don't need this fill right here. So instead, I'm going to hit command option V, and that's just going to fully replace the fill with whatever fill that this one has. So let's do this one more time. And because we've used a crop, it's now cropping a little bit funny. So I'm going to go back into my image. I'm going to change it back to fill and then back to crop. And now I can put this back in place. And I'm going to do it one more time on this one. Now what's happened here is it's using the image on the three shapes individually, but we want it to use the image on the shape as a whole. So I'm going to undo command Z. I'm going to unify this shape and then I'm going to try again. And now it's working fine. I'll just fix up that stretch by changing it back to fill and then putting it back to crop and aligning it into place. So now I have a couple of ways that I've done my imagery. I'm going to add in my home page again so I can visualize how this is actually going to look uh, on the home. We'll zoom out a little bit and I can drag one of these into place. I'll make sure that my screenshot of my home is the very uh, lower item and now I can play around with this a bit. Increase the size of that, move that into place and I might actually add uh, this shape in but it's not going to be of the person. I'll add an actual fill in of a color, make that solid. Let's try pink, not too bad. Let's try a bit of a darker pink and that's looking pretty good as is. Maybe move that a little bit. And I can try uh, one more option. Let's do this one. Let's give it an outline this time. We'll give it a stroke of about four. And let's try the stroke in blue. See how that looks. Maybe let's up the stroke a bit to about eight. And that's looking much better. And again, I'll just grab a different shape for the background, pop that in move that around a bit and make sure the fill isn't of the guy make that a solid we'll try a light blue maybe we'll give this one a stroke as well and i'm actually not liking the stroke on that one so i'm just going to completely get rid of it and i'll just leave it just as the blue and again now that we've created our home page image we can then take our images group them and export them to take them into Webflow. So I'll do this with this one as well. So let's export one of these. And of course we're going to jump back into Webflow and let's drop our image in next to the text. And that's looking pretty good. Number three, faded images. Now this way of using imagery is great when you're doing it on a page that has a colored background, such as this one. So here on my about page, the whole of the background is blue. So ideally I want my images to actually fit this blue background. Now I can do all of the recoloring of the image in Figma if I wanted to, but I don't want to. So let's do it directly in Webflow. So first I'm going to recolor this image. I'm going to add a filter and this filter is just going to be a grayscale one. We'll make it black and white. And now all I need to do is change the actual blending mode of the image and we want to change it to multiply. And if we do this, we can see that it does absolutely nothing. And the reason being is because the div that the image is inside needs to be actually colored. So we're going to go to the div that the image is inside and we'll change the background color to the color of the page. We'll change that to the blue. And now our image is working exactly how we think it would. Let's click back into our image and see what else we can do with the settings. If we take off our grayscale, it gives you another kind of look. Let's add that back on. Or we can change the actual mode that we're using to blend it. We can go through them and it will show us all the different options. Luminosity looks quite nice. So does hard light. Overlay is kind of a cool look. But let's leave that as multiply as we want the blacks to come through with the black of our text. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brighten up the image so the blacks aren't so black. So I'm just going to add in one more filter. It's going to be a brightness filter. We'll take that down to about, you can play around with it. Maybe, maybe that's about right. And if we want, we can even see how it looks with the contrast. So maybe adjust that contrast to be a bit more neutral. And that looks a little bit softer, a little bit nicer. And since we've used the same class for all of the images on this page, if we scroll down, our second image is also using the same properties. And so is our third. Number four, context imagery. 
Context imagery takes an image of a person and then asks, why is this person so happy? What are they looking at? What are they thinking of? It gives context to an image by adding elements around the image that further explain that idea. Usually this might be elements from the actual product itself, or just ideas and features from the product. So we're going to go back into Figma and design our elements there. Now if we wanted to do this in Webflow, we totally could, it might just take a little bit longer. So here we have our homepage again, and we'll drag in our image. Again, we'll just hold down shift and drag this to be a better size. Maybe about there is good with the person directly in the middle and we'll put that in place. And let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's make the top of the image fully curved. Let's make that 200 and 200. Actually, let's make that a bit more. Let's make it 300. And we'll increase the size of that slightly. And then we're gonna add in some elements to show why this guy is so chuffed. So maybe we'll add in a div here. Maybe make that a blue. And we can play around with this design however we want. We'll say stocks up 23%. I think that text a little bit larger so we can see it. And we'll move this div to be a little bit better around the text. I like Roboto, but I like Enter better. Let's try Enter. Drag that back into place. Let's make that medium. And I'm actually just going to change the color of this text. Make that a dark green. Let's just copy this div. Let's put another one here. And we'll just put another stat. Portfolio up. And put some cash money. Portfolio up. A whole bunch of money. This is one lucky fella. And we'll pop that down there. And then just change the color of this text to be a black. And we can adjust this how we want. I'm going to group these. Group these. I'm going to hit K to scale. I'm going to scale this down a tiny bit. Scale this down a little bit as well. Move that in. Move that in. Maybe we'll actually add one more down here. And we'll just say it's only 50 cents per transaction. And I can keep playing around. Maybe I'll make this one a dark blue. The stroke is a dark blue as well. And then we're using white for the text and the green is also a light green. And that's looking pretty good. So now I can export this whole image together. So I'm going to take these three pieces and the image, group that, and I can finally export it as a PNG. We'll give it a name. Save that. And now we're back in Webflow where we can finally add in our image to the hero and preview how that looks. Number five, background imagery. Now let's be fair and say that it is pretty easy to add background images to a section by using a background image, which does make sense. But the only problem is backdrop filters aren't going to work on this background image and filters are going to affect everything inside the image, including any text. And so we're going to do a background image section a different way, not a better way, just a different way. So let's change our background back to a plain color. We'll make it black and the text is going to be white and we're just going to drop an image in this section. And here's what we'll do. The position is going to be absolute. It's going to be the whole cover of the section. We'll actually choose an image to make sure that we can see that. And already that's pretty good, but currently it's taking from the top of the image. Uh, all we're going to do is we're going to change the width to 100%, the height to 100%, and we'll change the fit to be cover. And so now it's instead of taking from the top of the section, uh, the top of the image, it's taking from the middle of the image. And we'll just call this background cover. And now we can add as many filters to this image that we want without affecting the text. So let's make this a little bit darker. Do brightness and make that darker. And there's one option for our section. Or we can desaturate it, we can take away the color, make that grayscale. Or instead of doing either of those, we can change how we affect the text box. We'll just clear this, just call that floating card. Make sure the max width is only 550. We're going to add a backdrop filter to it. We can use blur for now. And we're just going to increase the padding on that. 
Might even make the background a little bit darker so we can read that text a little bit better. Let's do brightness, turn that down a bit. And let's try inverting these colors just to see how that looks too. So we'll change the color to black text and the brightness is gonna go up instead of down. And that's looking a bit strong, so I'm just gonna add some background color to the box so it's a little bit more legible. I'll add in a white and I'll take that down to about 20. And that's not too bad. Let's make it 30 just so we can make sure we can definitely read that text. And so there we have it. That's five more ways that you can add imagery with Figma and Webflow. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to leave a comment. Or if you have any video suggestions, feel free to leave that as a comment too. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.